Notice in today's gospel reading how when our Lord is criticized for not washing his hands before meals, our Lord responds, now you Pharisees clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. So you clean the outside of the cup and the dish. Now think about it, those of you who wash dishes by hand anyways, in other words, usually we spend more effort to clean the inside than the outside. In other words, if you have a soup bowl, for example, you want to make sure the inside is nice and clean. The outside, it doesn't matter so much. So our Lord is really saying the opposite, right? He's saying, you Pharisees, you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. So they have it wrong. And basically, um, you, you know, it's, 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 of course, intended to refer to ourselves. So, so often we make a concerted effort to look good externally. And we're like that too. In many ways, we are like the Pharisees. I mean, you know, just do this exercise if you like. How many times in a day do you look in the mirror? How many times in a day? Probably every time you go to the bathroom. Maybe more often. If sometimes people walking by store window, they'll look in the in the in the window to see their reflection. Or if you're in a store and there's a mirror, you take a look. How do I look? Right? So we look into the mirror so often because we're concerned about how we appear before others. And to a certain extent, that is good. And yes, we should appear respectable, we should appear decent, you know, especially when we come to Sunday Mass, you know, we should look, we should look good, we should be wearing our Sunday best. So we understand how important it is to appear good in the eyes of others. But how about on the inside? You know, imagine if we lived in a, in a world where we could see into everybody's minds and realize everything that they are thinking, the judgments that they are making. And in fact, in today's gospel reading, you know, it's not as if the, the, the Pharisee said anything, but the Pharisee was amazed to see that Jesus did not first wash before dinner. He didn't say anything, but our Lord knew what he was saying, what he was thinking. Maybe, you know, sometimes we could read the expression on someone's face. Oh, they're so surprised. So we might know what they're thinking also. But the whole point is that God sees what is inside. And we ought to be equally concerned, or in fact, we ought to be more concerned about how we appear on the inside than as, a, as re, in regards to how we appear on the outside. Because that is more important. And yes, if we have the right disposition inside, it will manifest externally also. You know, sometimes people say, oh, the externals don't matter. All that matters is what's inside. But the two are connected. The two are connected. And this is what our Lord is trying to get at. So no matter how much you beautify yourself externally, if you're rotten inside, well, what, what good is that? Right? So it really comes from within. The goodness of a person comes from within. And our Lord is basically saying, well, you Pharisees, you're, you're good about all these external things. You're good about observing the law. We had this in today's first reading also. And basically, you're not justified by the law. Just because you obey this and that and that, it doesn't mean you're justified. So true justification, as we heard in today's first reading, comes through faith in Jesus Christ and, and that faith working through love. So neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. And if we have true faith, we will have love. Love of God, first and foremost. Love of neighbor, secondly. Now notice in today's gospel reading... Our Lord says, so give for alms those things that are within and see everything will be clean for you. Everything will be clean for you. 
So the problem with the Pharisees is that they were full of pride and full of selfishness, and they wanted to look good before others, but they were going about it the wrong way. So when our Lord says, give for alms those things that are within, what's he getting at? And why is it that giving alms will make you clean or will purify you? You see, every time we sin, the root cause of all of our sins is pride and selfishness. Pride and selfishness. You know, some people, uh, or some places in the scripture, it says greed, right? So greed is, is a form of selfishness. We want things for ourselves. So pride and selfishness. And when we are proud and selfish, we fixate on ourselves and we want the whole world and everyone around, uh, around us to focus on us, to serve us. So the opposite of selfishness is self-giving. And the more that we give of ourselves and the things that we have, the more love we will acquire. We will grow in love. We will overcome our selfishness. We will learn to be truly humble and to see others in their need and, and to come to their aid. We will have greater compassion, which is a fruit of love. So what our Lord is saying is, you know, instead of seeking to appear so good, we'll, we'll give. Instead of seeking to amass wealth, give of your wealth. Care for the poor. Care for the person who is, is, is downtrodden. Care for the, the widow, the poor, the orphan. Care for all these people. And then you will be purified inside. In other words, you will have the right disposition. You will overcome your pride. You will overcome your selfishness. You will overcome your greed. And you will become a truly beautiful person. And that, that inner beauty, you know, sometimes we just see certain people and, and we could tell they're a good person, they're kind, they're, they're gentle, they're, they're generous, right? Doesn't matter how they dress, we see this in their face. And sometimes with the saints, there would be a kind of glow on their face so people could recognize that. Now, interestingly enough, the, the Pharisees had made this, you know, ritual cleansing before, before a meal into a religious precept. And basically our Lord is saying, that's wrong. And even though you wash your hands, which is a good custom to have, right? What's really important is that you be purified inside. So yes, we should wash our hands before meals. It's important to do that, but it's not a religious precept. And if you aren't able to wash your hands, well, it's not as if you're committing a sin, but this is what they imply. In other words, in their pride and in their selfishness, they got all this wrong. So pride and selfishness also blinds us. It blinds us to the truth. It also blinds us to the needs of others. Yes, it blinds us to ourselves. When we give in to pride, we deceive ourselves to think that we are something greater than what we really are. We live a life of deceit. We deceive ourselves and we want others to believe that we are something great, when in reality we're not. So, how many times a day does a person look into the mirror? And how many times a day do we do an examination of conscience? Very important. If we don't do an examination of conscience on a regular basis, we just keep doing all the bad things without even realizing it. Once we make a habit of doing an examination of conscience, we become aware of certain things that perhaps we weren't aware of before. And we will also make more of an effort to overcome those bad inclinations that we have, or at least to diminish the frequency of those sins that we commit. So it's recommended that we do an examination of conscience at least once a day, ideally before going to bed, because there's no guarantee that you're going to wake up. So to do an examination of conscience is a good thing. Okay, it may not be a mortal sin that you committed that day, but it's still good to make an act of contrition, to think, okay, what bad things have I done? What are the sins that I have done? And to ask God pardon for those sins, even though they're just venial sins. And even if, and yes, even if it is mortal sin, yes, make an act of contrition. Try to be as sorry as you possibly can be. Try to get to confession as soon as possible. 
You know, a good habit to do is also to give thanks at the end of each day for the wonderful things that have happened to you during that day. Oh, I saw a beautiful sunset. Give thanks. You know, yesterday we had Thanksgiving. So it's good to do both, to give thanks to God for the good things in, in your life on a daily basis, also to make uh, an examination of conscience. Now, those who take their spiritual life more seriously, the ideal is that every month you focus on trying to grow in one particular virtue and to overcome one particular vice or bad inclination, and also to do an examination of conscience around noontime. You know, how have I done in the morning? So it's kind of a reminder, okay, I gotta, I gotta improve in the afternoon at least. And then in the evening or at night before going to bed, you do your, your general examination of conscience. So the one earlier in the day would be kind of like a particular exam where you're just focusing, okay, I'm trying to grow in patience and yeah, I was impatient while driving to work and a little bit impatient with the receptionist or whatever. Right? So you just focus on that particular area that you are working on. So that would be like twice a day compared to how many times we look in the mirror. And how much time do we spend in, you know, beautifying ourselves, taking a shower, combing our hair, shaving and all these things, or even getting our hair cut, right? So all these things, right? Compared to how much time people in general spend on their spiritual life, purifying their, their interior, their soul. You know, how much time do we spend in spiritual reading, right? So it just goes to show, yes, we are very concerned about how we appear, just like the Pharisees were, but let us keep in mind that God sees us as we really are. We cannot deceive him. We cannot hide from him. We cannot pretend to be something greater than we are or more beautiful than we are. So let us do what we can to purify our interior and to become truly good persons.